hey there and welcome to the garden today we are planting in the unheated greenhouse even though i said i wasn't gonna plant in it this month um as far as like potting into these grow bags but i'm going to i'm gonna do a little planting in the grow bags i'm gonna take you along with me i also wanted to just give you um, a little january garden tour there's not a whole lot going on in january uh but i'll show you the overall look um of the garden because it's still lovely in its own wintry way but first let's talk about um these snow peas so peas are something that i always plant kind of early um that's why i'm even remotely thinking about this peas are something it says you know so in the spring as soon as the soil can be worked for me that's usually mid-february um we don't really get you know except for the occasional really cold freeze like the one we got around christmas time this year we don't really get like super freezing temperatures we don't get really cold like that and usually by valentine's day i plant my peas they grow beautifully do great and it works um really really well so because the unheated greenhouse is just that much warmer the ground in the grow bags is not freezing here are the grow bags um I thought, you know what, maybe I can put grow bags. I'm gonna kind of rough up the soil again and just sort of flatten it out. They don't look super great, but the container pond is right here in the middle, looking really cute. I'm hoping that the heat from this is actually going to also um, help like radiate some heat back into the greenhouse and continue to keep it a little bit warmer, which will help these snow peas go. Now what's really fun is that these are snow peas. I like to plant in containers, so I kind of keep an eye out for container varieties. And you see a lot of sugar, like the snap peas as dwarf varieties. But this is actually one of the first snow peas that I've seen that's a dwarf variety. And basically what it means is that it's not gonna be um, those big, huge vines. So you don't, don't have to provide like trellising for it. Um, let's see how tall they get. I think, does it say on here? I'm not sure if it says on here, but um, usually they're like around a foot or so. And yeah, they just don't get, don't need support. Yeah, support is not essential. It's great um, and really nice for containers. You can do so many fun things with planting peas. So I think it'll be perfect for the grow bags. And if I can keep the squirrels from digging it up, that'll be the biggest challenge. I think it'll be really beautiful in here and just kind of fun. Cause right now these grow bags, they just don't look good. So let's, uh, yeah, let's get these planted. have a tiny bit of support because this is like one of the shelves from the greenhouse um, and so they can kind of climb onto the sides of the greenhouse and the shelves. I may end up putting the actual shelf like tray in there once I get to doing some more seed starting but for now that's totally fine and we'll just kind of play that by ear as it goes but that's exciting. I'll come back and water these in but let me take you on a little tour of the January garden. Over here we have the unheated greenhouse with the container pond, which has been so fun to have in here. As I said, I'm hoping that that heat will kind of radiate out from the water. Um, so it'll be kind of a win-win situation, but it's been growing really well. I did put in this little container with um, some violas. I'm not sure if that's gonna be too wet for the violas, but I'm giving it just a little bit of a try uh, for right now. And in the summer, I'll put more like bog plants, like real water plants, and I'll move this back over um, out of the sun and into a little sh other shadier corner of the garden. But for right now, it's gonna be in the greenhouse. Over here, I had a little bit of squirrel digging up. But the most exciting thing you can see are the foxgloves doing really, really well. These are the Excelsior foxgloves. So they are biannual. If you've been following along, I'm trying to trick them. I started them in July of last year and I'm hoping that they'll actually end up blooming this 2023 season because they've you know, just been growing since last July. So hopefully that happens with those. And then I've got a couple, I think these are some yeah, Indian summer uh, Rebecca's and I'm going to be starting some more seeds actually out here in the unheated greenhouse in kind of like a modified winter sowing style thing. These trays, everything died in, so just whatever. Right now, here, let's talk about containers. Not a whole lot going on. Some perennials, like this is a cat mint here. There's a Heliopsis over there. I do have um, some garlic 
in this container, which is looking beautiful, and some onions. This container got hit so hard by that um, frost that we got. It is just looking really rough. It was beautiful and lush and full of lettuce, and now it is not. There's dazzling blue kale in there and the violas. Violas did not seem to mind the cold. Um, the dazzling blue kale did actually get hit really hard by the cold, um, which is surprising because kale usually lasts really well. Dazzling blue isn't one of those like, you know, Siberian kind of kales, so might be why it got hit, but I was actually surprised to see that kind of damage. Um, and if you've been following along with my raised bed um, updates, you'll know that my mustard greens, a lot of things got taken out by that frost that we got. So right now I'm just kind of, I don't know, we'll see. I may replant that. I may plant more lettuce in it. I may just kind of clean it out and mulch it. Mulching has been sort of my temporary solution for a lot of these containers where nothing's growing to just hold over until we get into the growing season. We'll update under the grow, um, the row covers, but I'll just give you a quick look. If you saw that video, nothing has changed in here. We got the corn salad. The kale is looking real rough. It continues to suffer, uh, but the onions and garlic look great. That's what these guys are. And so does the radicchio. Those little uh, maroon seedlings continue to look really, really nice. And they're very happy, not bothered. This at least is providing enough protection with this row cover. These really, um, do help things are called an accelerator row cover and they do provide enough support i find like you know if you get a light kind of frost but with that really cold freeze nothing nothing is going to protect it there's nothing under here except for onions lots of onions growing and ooh, this is my um russian sage just wintering over in here which will hopefully get really big and beautiful and, and bushy in the coming season let's see my little perennial section over here has nothing going on it's about time I think to come for me to come in and trim back that flox I was leaving it because it was it was looking kind of pretty for a while there but now it's sort of just looking dead <laughs> so I probably should come out and clean it up um, and then this was the bed that I cleaned out got the must uh not mustard greens the collard greens but you can see the damage even on the collard greens from that freeze it just it just was so so cold but i'm at least hoping to be able to harvest a bit more of that in this coming season and of course the violas are just lifesavers look at how pretty these guys are even in the middle of january they look beautiful. The um, Dusty Miller is looking a little sad. But then we've got spring bulbs in these containers, so no sign of growth yet on most of them. This one has some little mini daffodils, which you can kind of see coming up, along with some grape hyacinths, which is all this. And I actually grew this from last year. I'm really curious to see how it does on a second it, season. But yeah, we'll see how it does going through to another season in the same container i did you know i just gave it some fertilizer and and we're gonna see what happens um i've never done bulbs in containers consecutive years and kept them in the container so that's a little bit of an experiment um, but i've got all the containers out here because i'm trying to do a little bit of a container challenge where i keep the containers all in the same place um for the whole whole year and then just like change out the plants and really watch that progression mind i brought out my second container pond this one i don't do plants in but i like to do like a fountain or something although i'm thinking of putting a another lily pad in this one um in the summer so right now i just left it out here so i can kind of know where it is as far as the space goes we've got the clematis that are waiting i still do have this um, garland over the arch but it's getting kind of you know dry and brown and so maybe I'll leave it up till the end of January and then probably probably have to take it down because it's just not looking it's not looking super great but it's been a really fun addition to the arch and I think it's just made everything look kind of wintry and fun I do have a few greens in this container a few junipers they're actually like stuck in the container so they're looking better more violas more bulbs in these containers this has become just the carrot bed 
but the carrots look lovely. Look how happy those carrots are. Gosh, I mean, I didn't, I don't know. I guess I just didn't quite realize what a great winter plant carrots are. Carrots are just a great plant to grow through the cold weather. I totally, I don't know. I didn't think about it. So from now on, carrots are going to become a staple in my, my fall winter garden. I'm hoping I can get a nice, nice harvest from those carrots, probably in the spring. Right now they're still really teeny tiny. I maybe should have started them a bit earlier. I don't know. I'm going to have to play around with when I actually sow my carrot seeds because I know it does I don't think they grow when it's really hot. I'm not quite sure. I'm gonna have to look into that more, but beautiful, beautiful um, production here in the winter. They're just totally happy. And that's really nice to see this time of year. It's, it's nice to have a few things that are growing and are doing well because, you know, the trees are lost their leaves. There's not a whole lot of green that's going on right now. Although I was so inspired. I went on a walk in the garden or in the woods so used to saying I'm out in the garden. I went for a walk in the woods and I was noticing that all of the moss is still really beautiful and green. It's still looking lush um, and it's kind of fun. So I went ahead and brought some home, put it over here in my little, <laughs> on my little table. And I just have like a little container of moss. I don't know. I just think it's kind of cute and it's something green we'll see if, this is like a pretty shady area so i'm hoping i'll probably just grow it all season long i think that'll be kind of a fun little addition it's right here i've got the chairs um and so it's a nice little spot and then tilting up here i can sit here and look at the garden there's some perennials over here not doing much this is where the container pond will go back toward and then i've got grow bags here more of these collard greens that are really pretty. I mean, they're just, again, so nice to have something growing. I think I'm gonna do even more like collard greens and then these are cabbages. Even more of these next year because the lettuce doesn't last through the frost and even, yeah, the mustard greens didn't last. But this cabbage, let me take away these leaves. I mean, how pretty is that? Next to the blueberry bush. There's some good buds on that blueberry bush. I'm hoping maybe I'll get some blueberries next year. It'd be fun. Oh, another thing I can grow in the winter are the rutabagas. You know, I'm obsessed with these. I just love them. So there's onions in there, rutabagas. Again, everything's under this bug netting. Nothing to do with bugs. That is all there to protect from the squirrels. I have found that the best way for me to keep squirrels out of my garden is just to provide a physical barrier like that. So. That's what my thought process has been, um, been with that and it's been working really well. They haven't gotten under that bug netting and I figure, you know, bug netting is something I can use for other purposes as well. I'll be able to obviously keep the bugs off the brassicas. If I do want to grow more collard greens, if I do want to grow more cabbages, those when I'm planting them out in the end of August, we still have got a bunch of those cabbage moths and stuff like that. And so having some bug netting around to put over those things will be really important. Honestly, yeah, the only way that I can grow those in that time of year. So we'll, we'll leave that too. But anyways, that's that's the January garden. Again, not not a whole lot. It's still, it's still out here. It's, I'm still having fun getting out in it. I'll give you a little viewpoint of it. I'm going to go now and water in all those peas that we planted so that we can um, get those growing hopefully and I'll try to put something over them again so the squirrels don't get in there and mess with them. But yeah, that is, oh I forgot to mention, we got the hanging yes. baskets. They look pretty dead. But the violas, violas that do not mind. I need to just pack these full of violas next year because how pretty. I mean it's just, yeah nothing better than having flowers in January. So that is the January garden. Thank you so much for spending a little time out here with me and I hope you're having a lovely day. Maybe getting out of your garden, maybe enjoying just looking at it from the window and dreaming about <laughs> next season. I'll talk to you in the next video. Bye-bye.